welcome back to A Moment in History. I'm Seth Udinsky. In this moment in history, let's travel back to the American Civil War. Now, when we think of the war that saved the Union, we often think of titanic figures such as Lincoln or Grant or Lee. But for the Union, there was another man whose military genius, and in some cases, brutality, is the stuff of legend. He was U.S. Grant's right-hand man in the later half of the war, and his desire to smash and punish the South for its rebellion made him a hero in the North, but public enemy number one in the South. Let's discover the brilliant Union general, William Tecumseh Sherman. Named Tecumseh after a famous Indian warrior chief, Sherman was born in 1820, and in 1840, he graduated from West Point, where almost immediately after graduating, he was thrust into conflict in Florida during the Second Seminole War. He left the military in 1853, but did not find satisfaction in any other employment until his return to the Army in 1861. Now, Sherman was every bit the stereotype of what we might think a hard military man is. Where Robert E. Lee was grandfatherly and elegant, and U.S. Grant somewhat quiet and reserved, Sherman was hard-nosed and determined. He once said this, War is cruelty, and you cannot refine it. He saw the cruelty of war firsthand in the bloodiest conflict in American history, the Civil War. Sherman rose in the ranks of the U.S. Army for his military brilliance during the war, and in 1864, he became the commander of the Union Army in the Western Theater, second only to U.S. Grant when Grant became Supreme Commander. In this position, as the Union was gaining the upper hand against the Confederates in the war, Sherman perfected what historians have since called the art of total war. Grant led his men to battle against the South, but more than that, he leveraged the Union's supreme technology and manpower to suffocate the South. Equally important was Sherman's desire to utterly punish the South. History remembers Sherman as a man who may not have cared much about the issues of slavery, but his wrath came upon those he saw as traitors and rebels. After conquering and destroying Atlanta in 1864, Sherman said this, those who brought war deserve all the curses a people can pour out. He made his legendary march to the sea in 1864, where his men virtually destroyed the entire terrain in their path as they marched the 250 miles from Atlanta to Savannah on the Atlantic coast. When U.S. Grant was elected President of the United States in 1869 after the war, Sherman was elevated again to fill Grant's former role, becoming Supreme Commander of the U.S. Army until 1884, seven years before his death in 1891 at the age of 71. Thanks so much for joining me once again for a moment in history.